Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to do a very beginner's tutorial on how to create a seamless pattern. So let's get started. So my first one is going to be polka dots. Uh, you can do any kind of shape. I'll, I'll show you with different ones afterwards. We have polka dots, we have flowers, we have rocket ship stripes. So I'm going to start with polka dots. So I'm going to get rid of everything here. I'm going to delete it. Then I'm going to go to the uh, shape tool and I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I will hold shift and decide any size that I want my polka dots to be. And if you have the magnet snapping turned on, that means you push in the magnet, it should tell you where the center point is. And it's very important to have, have it right in the center. There you go. So that's the center point. If you're not sure, you can turn on this transform origin thing so you can see where the center is. So what I forgot to tell you is I created a document and the document is 1000 by 1000 and 300 DPI. Uh, it must be a square document for this to work correctly. And let me explain how pixels work. The top corner is zero, zero. And since this document is a thousand by a thousand, if you go to the right, this is the X point of 1000. And if you go down, this is the Y point of 1000. So if you wanted something in this point, up here is zero, and then you go down a thousand, so your X would be zero and your Y would be 1000. Now you don't really need to do this because snapping is turned on, but it's good to know because you may want to do a little bit different type of pattern and it's a good idea to learn it. So what I did was just to show you, I pulled out my transform tab and you can go to view, studio, and transform. And I made sure that this center box was clicked. And you can't tell, I don't know why, but I just clicked it and it, and I keep track. So we are now, if you if you understood what I was telling you if, you, if you're in the center, that means your center point would be 500 across because this is a thousand and 500 down because this is a thousand. So this is an exact center. Now you don't need once again, you don't need to do that if you have snapping turned on because once you see the green and the red line, you know you're exactly in the center. So now I'm going to duplicate that control or command J. I'm going to move out a little bit here and now I'm going to move that one so that the center point hits right there right in that corner so like I said before this point is 0x and 0y which it's showing right here so now I'm going to take this one and do control and command J and I'm going to move this one down and if we did it correctly this should be 0 for X and then 1000 for Y and that's what it is. I could take these both now and control or command J and slide them across holding the shift key until it snaps in. Like I explained before this right one is 1000 across which is X and 0 down because that's where the point is 0 and then this one would be 1,000 across and 1,000 down. You don't have to know that, but it is really good for you to learn that because in future patterns, you can use that to your advantage. We don't have to do patterns that are in like these five points. So now what I'm doing, and remember, I had, I have a blank background. I didn't put a solid background. You can do, if your background is white, you can go to document, transparent background. See, if I took that off, it would be white. And if I put that back on, it's transparent. And I'm putting that way. You don't have to do that, but I'm doing that for a reason. And I'll show you why in a minute. So now that we have these, I'm going to do file, export, and I'm going to do a PNG. And I'm going to call it, I did it before. I'm just going to overwrite it. I'm going to call it dots and I'm going to save it. I'll replace that one. So now when I switch over, I'll show you how to use this. 
I'm going to go here to a new document and I pulled in this vase from stock photos. We'll first take a rectangle and we'll give it a little bit of the size of this vase like this. And then we'll do the fill. So now we'll say layer, new fill layer. And we are going to turn the, instead of solid, we'll go to bitmap. And let's take those same dots. And now it's in there. So you grab your handles to make it smaller. And you decide how big you want these dots to be. If you want them on an angle, you can move them on an angle. However you want them to be. I'm just going to leave them normal size right now. And I think I'm going to go something like that. And then I'm going to deselect. And now if I right click and say rasterize, now I can use the warp tool. So I can go to the mesh warp tool. And I'm going to get a close up here. And I'm going to start warping this. I'll go like that. And I'll keep, I'll pull this one back. And I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to pull this one back a little so it's normal. And then I'm going to take this side and pull it out. And this side I'm going to go back here. And also pull back to make them kind of straight. And I'll do this one again, same thing. And just like that. And then I could grab the actual handle itself. I mean, uh, the, the arm itself and do this way if I want. But I really want to get it closer to where I think it needs to be. Oops. So I'm just going to pull on this handle and do that. And maybe this one and kind of do that. Then of course you could change your blend modes. So I think I will go with, I like the darkened color. Now why did we make this a PNG and not a solid white? We could have done the same thing. Well one of the reasons I made it a PNG is you can also now go to effects and do a color overlay and you could decide what color you want those dots to be and choose any darker, lighter, and maybe I think I'll go with kind of a, well actually I'm going to go with the green because the greens, let's let's start with this green and see if we can kind of play with that to make it go nicely and then maybe a little bit darker and I like that, that's kind of cool. That's how you can put a pattern on something. So now let's try another one, let's go back and the patterns do not have to be perfect circles at all. Let me group this. I'll call it dots. There you go. And now I'll turn that one off. And this one I did with rocket ships. But you notice how I made the rocket, even though the rocket ship is not a perfect circle or a square or whatever, the rocket ship, I overlapped the center. But it's still exactly the same process because what I really did, that's the middle one, so I'll get rid of these. I'll, in fact, I'll duplicate four times. Control Command J, Control Command J, Control Command J, Control Command J. And let's take this one. And if you can follow up there, but remember what I taught you, look, first we'll put that in the middle. And I want to show that dot in the middle just to see that is the center of the page, 500 by 500. So if you want to do it numerically, this corner would have to be 0x and 0y. And then let's grab the next one. And the next one is 0 up here and 1,000 here. So just do 0, 0, and 1,000. Okay, and you see, I let them overlap because I wanted to have a little bit of a stripe. Uh, next one, let's grab it. And this one would be, let's see, we go 1,000x and no, nothing down. So 0y, so it's 1,000. And then 0. And then the last one will be 1,000 this way and 1,000 this way.
Now remember, the reason I'm doing the 500 and 1000 is because my page size is 1000 by 1000. If your page size is 1200 by 1200, then you have to do half of 1200. So instead of 500, 500, this would be 600, 600. And then this would be 1200 across and 1200 down. So you get the idea. I, I decided on 1000 by 1000 because I thought it's easier in my head to do the math. And I don't have to worry about finding those exact center points. So now I'm going to do file export. And I already did this, but I'll, I'll overwrite it to show you this is the exact one. It's a PNG. And I called it rocket. So I'm going to overwrite that one to show you that this is the same. I'm replacing it. And now let's go to here. And OK, so I took this guy and I took his shirt. And I already masked it off. I did not do a great mask, but I did a mask. So all I'm worrying about now is this mask. If I take away the guy, you'll see that it's just, this is the mask itself. And the reason he's here is because he's showing up underneath. So now what I'll do is I will put a pattern on top of him. So all I have to do now is command click on the mask and it'll select what was done there. I will go to layer, new fill layer, and instead of solid bitmap, and I'm going to take that rocket ship I just created. And here we go with the rockets. So we can just decide. I think I kind of like it really small like that. And I'm going to be OK with that and deselect. And now I will just change my blending. I think I'm going to go with darker color. I think they work the best. Average isn't bad too. Average is kind of nice actually. It mixes the colors in. I'm going to leave it average. It's kind of light. And if I decide I want that even darker, I can duplicate that. But I don't want it darker. I'm going to just leave it at average. So I wanted that little, the faded look looks pretty good. At the end of this video and in the description below, I'll have a link of another tutorial I did where after you have the patterns, you can make these patterns fit into the creases and like you push them up and you freeze certain points and it, it looks absolutely real. This is a beginner's tutorial. So all of these patterns are going the same way. They really shouldn't be going the same way like this, but you can fix that and just check out that other tutorial. So I'm gonna go back one more time and I'm just gonna show you a couple of quick things. This one is the flowers. I made the flowers by going to the cog tool uh, I'm going to hold shift and I need to be centered. I could do it both ways. I showed you how to do it. I can go this way and make everything snap and make sure, but oh, I could have typed in 500 by 500. So that's fine. I just went up to the cog tool because the cog, cog tool has so many great things. So let's see, tooth size. Uh, I forget how I did it now. <laughs> Curvature, I know I went really curved like that. And whole radius, inner radius. There we go. So I, that's how I got the flower on top. Should be different. I don't remember how I did it. There we go. So I just knocked the tooth size down. Whole radius 20, notch size 0, inner radius 3. And the inner radius could even be bigger. Like that. And I made a flower. And once again, I'm not going to go through it all again, but I did the flower. And if I went back to this guy's shirt, let's hide this one and command. There we go. I So I selected my mask just to show him. And then I went to layer, new fill layer. And this time I chose the flower, which I have here somewhere. There we go. And I did the flowers like this. And you can make it really small, which I kind of like like that. And then I deselected, Control or Command D. And maybe I just want it to be, I'm just going to, I'll multiply here. And maybe I just want that flower, I want it to be a gray shirt. Um, so how about that? Or I can do, I don't want it to be too crazy. I could do a pale blue. 
I could do all kinds of things. So once again, check out the other tutorial that I have listed at the end and in the description on how to get all these folds to look absolutely real and all these seams to look real. So I hope you like this tutorial. It is a beginner's tutorial and you should practice a little. Take all different kinds of graphics and use them and create your own patterns. You can put them on boxes, cubes, you can put them on anything you want. The vase I put it on, you just choose what you want and go for it. Have a great day.